In this video, we're going to be going over the CAD and CAM for those plastic parts I made last week. So these were for a coworker of mine for his boat. They were the stoppers on the side. So I'm going to walk you through how I designed this and actually made this solid model. So let's get started. So I'm just going to draw another sketch up here and kind of show you what I did. So after I took some measurements from the wood block, I came in here and I wrote down what I needed to. So that block is 5.25, the length of it's 9.9, .9. and then to put this angle in here, you can do a couple different ways. What I did, I just drew a line across, trimmed to the rectangle, and then uh, what I did was I dimensioned from the point to the end what it should be, which is that 5.85, and then this point to the bottom which is 2.4. So you can do that, or you can come in here and put points along this line and then dimension the points out to where they need to be. So like right there and right there, and then take a line and connect the points. I just did the line because it's a little bit easier. Uh, just a couple less steps, uh, which is perfectly fine. So we're going to do the holes now. So I'm just going to put two random holes anywhere. And I'm going to come over here to dimension. But first, I'm going to move some of these lines out so I got some room so it actually looks nice. So, dimension. I'm going to go from here to the end. And that should be 2.54. And if you watch the video, you'll learn that I forgot to take half the edge finder when doing these. So, when the block got finished, they were 2.44. hundred thou off because uh, I forgot to do that which is fine. It, it worked okay. He actually put them on the boat and they on the trailer and they looked fine. So we're going to dimension this. Now we're going to go from the bottom for our Y measurement, 3.25. Oops. And then we're going to go here to here. So this needs to be 1.1. So now we need to dimension these holes. So these need to be 0.425. And right here, instead of entering that value again, I'm just going to click this value and enter it and see how it pops up with this uh, D value, this D62. This ties dimension 62 to that, which is this dimension. So when I press enter, it's going to default to whatever this hole is. So if I do 2 inches, it's going to be 2 inches. So... That is a great way if you have tons of holes, uh, you can dimension them all for one thing. Because of that, you uh, can adjust things multiple times uh, and not have to sit there and adjust every single one. So now that we're done with the layout, I am going to extrude this block. So this block is 1.45. So right there, I just extrude the block. I'll turn the sketch off. Now, we need to do these counterbores right here, so I'm just going to draw a sketch real quick on this surface. Now, these are a left and a right hand, so what I'm doing now is the left side. So right there, it snaps to the center, and then I'll do the right side here in a minute. So right there, they snap to the center. If they don't snap to the center, you can come over here to, to concentric. Click that and click the circle, and it will actually snap both centers together. So let's dimension this real quick. So this is 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So we'll stop, and then I'll go to the other side. So these are left and right sides, so they're mirrored. Instead of making two different ones, all the outside profiles were the same. And the way I did it was I created the bare block, and then I just flipped it for whatever way I needed for the holes. So on this side, we're just going to put the same thing. We're going to put those circles. So 900. 900. We're going to extrude those down. So... The mention should be negative 0.3. So we'll just do two of them. It's no big deal. So 
So right there, we just finished that up. So that's the bear outside. Now, the guy wanted radiuses on these corners. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to put a little a 50 thou radius on these corners. And it's also going to help break up a sh that sharp edge uh, that's on the corner. A nice rounded corner fits very well. So we're going to change that to 50 thou. I'm going to add another one right here. And I'm going to put a quarter inch radius, oops, quarter inch radius along the top of this part. So, here we go. So, right there, quarter inch. That look right. So that looks a little different from uh, what my original model was. So I'll go back. So I'll get rid of that one. And then I'll make another one just to that, which is the way I originally did it. So we'll do that. We'll do that. So, yep. There we go. So that looks a lot better. Probably just because it was trying to do it at the same time, so it was uh, having problems. So right there has a nice corner right here, nice radius that ties into this radius. So that looks great. So this is a finished part. So as you see, I have a sketch uh, right here that has a note. If I can, I'll pull it up. Right here is a note for myself when I make these blocks. Note. Each side has a counter bore, but it's for left and right. Left and right will only have a counter bore on one side. This is a master program. So this is, I'm saying that this geometry is all the same, but these holes aren't. So one side has the holes on, and the counter bores on this side. And then the left side or the right side has them on this side. So the part is just a master program that I can pull in, use, and not have to have two different ones with the exact same tool paths. So we're going to jump into the cam now. So we'll jump through the cam. I'll show you. I'm going to show you on the first block that I made, not this one. I'll get rid of this one, uh, and I'll walk you through the process of this one. To get started with the cam side, I got my different ops right here. So we're going to get off one. So we're going to go over here to set up. So my stock I have... It was actually two big, it was actually one big sheet that then I cut up down the center. So that's why the, the edges are kind of oversized. You know? And it's why I had to slot it because my machine, the travel uh, just would not allow me to machine the whole outside, which slotting smarter because it takes less time. I don't have to rough all that material out. I can just come in right to the side, and especially with plastic is was really nice. So right there's my model dimensions. And then right here is my stock dimensions. Just kind of rough estimates um, of what I could measure. And the block was milled, so that's why some of these are kind of uh, weird dimensions. Uh, the only thing that wasn't was this one. So I put it centered in this whole uh, block. So I don't have any material to hold on to, so I actually just came up here and only machined so far down and then uh, flipped it over and cut the top out off. So after you get your stock set up, I came over here to box point. And I select the center of my stock and I select the top of my stock, as you can see, as my Z. Selected my machine type and everything, my my model I selected as the body. So problem I also ran into was with my machine travel and the face mill. This block is eleven and three quarter, and I have a two inch face mill, uh, which basically runs me out of mill travel if I don't center that block just perfect. So, basically, I selected the, uh, the face pass. I select my speeds and feeds. Uh, 1,500 RPM is a good kind of a speed for the fly cutter, uh, 15 inches a minute. So, I selected this top profile, and then on my passes, I put climb. I wanted it in one direction because I do have some tra tram air on my uh, machine. So... Because of that tram error, I decided to climb so it cuts one way, so now I'm not cutting back and forth. Uh, packed extension, 
and then my step over. So this stuff I didn't even mess with, um, but down here in the lead in, lead out, I kind of messed with that a tad if I was having problems with uh, my face mill when it uh, was kind of going to be out of machine travel. So I think I changed this to point one, uh, and then I did this to the shortest path, but other than that, I didn't really mess with it. So clicked it. So as you can see is when it comes in, it's actually going to be right on the edge of the material and it's going to be plunging in the material. That doesn't matter because it's not going to affect the part at all, especially with this being plastic. It's just going to cut right through it. And I just have to make sure that that line doesn't just start on the material because then you'll kind of get a witness mark or some weird lines. And then on the way out over here, I ran out of travel. I had it too far over, so I couldn't go all the way over like I wanted. So because of that, um, there, I did have some little lines over here, but I took some scotch bright, scotch bright the face, and it was fine. So for the contour, I just have put my 3 8 uh, 8,000 RPM for the uh, the finished feed or the, the 5,000 stock to leave the 500 in my ramp. I could have went a lot faster, I think, um, and in my ramp feed rate. I probably could have bumped that up a lot more, um, but also I wasn't holding on to a whole bunch, uh, eighth inch or less. Um, so I just was rolling with what I had, uh, just being kind of conservative. I didn't want to throw the part out. So I had a, the part going down 1.3 because I was only holding on to the very, very bottom of this. And I didn't have a lot of room between where I set it at and the bottom of the jaw. I also want to make sure that the line was below this radius so I wouldn't have a witness mark. So... Stock to leave, I did 15 uh, along the whole outside of the part. Five degree ramp, half inch max, step down. Ended up with a nice finish on that. And as you can see, I'm just sliding right through this material. Now, I did have the material bind up here. So if I wanted to not do that, I could rough away all this material right here. And then uh, slot right here a little bit more so the chips would have flown out better. It's easier to put a slot here that doesn't look pretty so the chips can get out when you do this slot because then you're technically not slotting if you do that. You're just having a uh, heavier engagement, but you're still ramping as you're slotting. So I have the finish, finish pass, uh, nothing special, 8,500 RPM, 45 inches a minute. So I just selected this bottom ring. Finished the part. I did walk it in a little bit. Um, I put some diameter comp in there. Came out with a really nice finish. I did two passes uh, just to kind of clean up just any little fuzzies or anything I was having uh, finish-wise. Came out really nice. The contour, that kind of kicked my butt. Um, I was having a line around the top of this part from that end mill, and I could not figure out why. And I was having steps on the first couple passes right here, and then everything else looked fine. I need to work on that. I need to spend some more time uh, on my surfacing tool bath. And that time is kind of crazy for plastic. Uh, I was just kind of pushing as hard as I could, but I'm obviously doing something wrong. Um, so I need to spend some more time in the surfacing tool paths. I don't spend a lot of time doing surfacing tool paths. Um, the only time I really have is when I'm putting a chamfer in uh, and I don't have an 82 degree cutter, I'll surface that, surface that. I'm surfacing these corners. Most of the time I'll use a corner rounder uh, and just kind of go at it and plunge uh, on the engine blocks, I did use a parallel uh, finish. That actually worked out pretty well for me. Um, I did have some problems with it kind of going places it didn't want to, but uh, just constrained that and it fixed it. So I lost some stock to leave because I really just wanted to not have that line. And then my step down, I, uh, it's plastic, so I don't really need it really fine. And some scotch bright smoothed it out really nice. So... Definitely need to go back to the drawing board on that surfacing tool path. I need to make it better. I need to get that cycle time down. So I will be messing with that. And then for op two, it was really easy. I just set my uh, stock to previous op or model, I guess, if I remember right. Yep, this uh, is the solid body. So I did that just because I do have a top hat, but the top hat, I mean, it's plastic, it's not going to matter, because on this pass, I actually trimmed the top hat, 
And as you saw in the video, I took an indicator and I indicated these two sides. That was so I could tell how far off I was from uh, the first stop. I was actually pretty close. So, and then this is just a pass to finish it. Did the face. The face on the uh, second side was a lot easier because that uh, stock was a lot smaller. So I was easily centered. Came out really nice. Again, the surfacing. I need to work on that tool path. Uh, it's basically identical to the first one. Now, this is the left side on these holes. So I ended up just doing a ramp feed rate to go inside these holes. Three degrees, nothing special. Probably could have went a little bit more, um, but they're really shallow, so it didn't matter too much. So now this one came out pretty nice on the finish and everything. Um, set to the bottom of the pocket for my heights. Now, this one I was having problems with. I was actually melting as I got in this hole, and around the ring, I was actually having um, plastic come up and just start melting out into the counterbore. I just had the wrong ramp feed rate or the ramp uh, angle. So now I'm at 15 and I'm pushing it uh, pretty hard. Didn't have a single problem. It actually looked really nice. The chips were coming out um, and the plastic wasn't getting hot and melting like it was. Now, if I really wanted to, I could have drilled these holes and then just finished it with the end mill. But I was like, why do a tool change, uh, especially in plastic? So I just pushed these through it. And then I ended up doing two pass finish on the bottom of those holes. And I did do um, no computer wear because anytime I uh, uh, put wear on, it would actually just start messing up the, the program. And after I ran it, the holes were in um, to begin with, so I didn't have to comp it or anything. So I also wanted to make sure that I didn't hit the vise because I put eighth inch parallels underneath here to space it off the vise. So I'm going 50 thou below that bottom surface. And I made sure I set the surface to the bottom of the part so I knew I was not going to hit those parallels when I was doing that uh, finish because that was a big concern of mine. It's kind of the way um, I did the part is I was worried about that. So this is kind of a, a, a good thing that I did that. So all I did was I selected the two holes and then I, I selected my heights. It was just as two passes. I went kind of slow on my lead-in feed rate just because I didn't... Uh, Wanted to be able to watch it and it just slowly going there. And I only had two parts to run, so I'm not trying to optimize this uh, cam or anything. The right side is identical to the left side, word, like word for word. Same thing, same ramp, same everything. The big thing with this plastic is, is you want to make sure that you're going fast enough that you're not shearing or, or not shearing, um, that you're melting or just kind of not cutting the plastic, you're tearing it. You want to make sure that you're in a sweet spot where you're actually cutting the material, not ripping it apart as you go around it. And you also want to try to keep as much heat as you can out of it so it doesn't start melting. And if you start having problems with tolerancing or hole sizes, it probably means that you're getting heat in the hole and it's changing it. A lot of time heat is a big killer in plastic because it will affect the part so much. So I hope you guys learned something. I know I, this is kind of just a brief overview, uh, not too in-depth, but I thought I'd at least show it and see how you guys like it. And if you guys like it, I'll start doing more of these, more in-depth. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you can, hit that subscribe button. And please go back and watch my video over this plastic job. So thank you, guys. Mm -hmm.